This is Lindsay, uh, red kneed bird eating spider from Mexico. As you can see, she's quite a docile species. Yeah. She has two parts to her body, unlike insects that have three parts. So she's known as an arachnid. She also has eight legs and what looks like two legs at the front, which are known as pedipalps, much more dexterous, a lot of times used to push the food into her fang or calissaria area. She does have eight eyes too, but they're very simple eyes and she can only see the difference between light and dark. But she does have her very hairy, sensitive legs, which can tell what the temperature is, or maybe even for defense. What she does, if she needs to defend herself, is she'll make herself bigger by putting her legs up, or she'll scrape one of her hind legs against her abdomen, producing these urticating or irritating hairs which uh, can be to her predecessors. So as you can see, she's quite happy sitting there, look. The zoo reared these up 18 years ago, so she's in fact 18, with a potential age of 30. So they're quite long-lived, these animals. Uh, but because they're quite nice and easily handleable, there was a lot that was actually collected for the pet trade in the 1970s and 1980s. So they're actually protected now through CITES, the Convention on International Trade of Endangered Species, because so many were taken from the wild and all their habitats destroyed. So she's not poisonous, she's venomous, and she puts a little bit of venom in her prey, something like a cricket, and then that, will, that also contains an enzyme which breaks down the cricket's body into a kind of soup, and then she can suck it up through her straw-like fangs. Uh, at the zoo we usually feed them once a week. They take about five to seven years to become this big, this adult size. Um, so if we talk a little, about, a little bit about the life cycle, we can see she's a female, she's about six inches. Uh, males are identified by having much larger pedipalps, which they use for mating, uh, a much longer leg span, and a smaller abdomen because they only eat the minimum of food, they're always hunting around for a female to mate with. And when they find the female, she's usually living, not in a web, but among some stones or wood. They will do a special tapping dance to signify that they're there, to make sure she knows that it's not something to eat, not dinner. And then he will proceed to mate with her, and if he's lucky, he will go on his merry way and look for another female. But it is possible she might eat him, but that's okay because all his goodness goes into making those 1,000 eggs that she will proceed to lay in a special egg sack over the next couple of months. Uh, over the next couple of months they start to develop in there, in the egg sack. When they hatch they're known as nymphs. Now these animals need to shed their skin periodically because their skin cannot grow. They have to shed their outside skeleton, their exoskeleton. And the nymphs inside the egg sac, they have to shed their skin too. And then they are ready to come out of the egg sac into the big wide world, eat all those things to keep it, uh, to get a big. Things like crickets, flies, ants, cockroaches, all those pest species that us humans don't like. And then finally they will be going through lots of different skin changes per year, very hungry. And over the next five to seven years, we'll be eating all those things and going through nymph stage, spiderling, juvenile, sub-adult, and finally adult. And then they'll be their own, the size here, and they'll be able to have their own egg sac. Predators would be probably birds or lizards, frogs maybe, snakes. They would be as natural predators. Apart from man, of course, who's collected it in big numbers in the 70s and 80s.